I'm so thrilled that Cambridge University Library has acquired for the nation and for the world the Stephen Hawking Archive. It makes me incredibly proud to see um, the selection of materials laid out here today. You know, they're, they're a very small part of what is a, an enormous archive. Um, but of course it brings back, you know, fond memories of, of my father. Um, and, you know, I think uh, it encapsulates everything he was, you know. He was, um, yes, he was a sort of globally renowned um, sort of uh, scientist, but he was also a uh, sort of popular culture icon um, and you know and, and ultimately what he sought to do was to um, to, to sort of bring um, science to the widest number of people possible. Well Stephen had a profound legacy uh, and a huge influence on cosmology and gravitation um, particularly his uh, breakthrough discovery that black holes actually radiate which brought together the two great revolutions of 20th century physics, quantum mechanics on the microscopic scale and gravity on the scales that, that govern the evolution of the universe. And so to see this, uh, you know, these papers here, these landmark papers which really influenced, uh, you know, some of the most important papers in 20th century theoretical physics, um, is, is a, a wonderful thing. It's inspiring for scientists and, and maybe for the next generation to actually see these papers themselves and, uh, and to, to think about uh, you know, the, how Stephen, through his curiosity and through his determination in the face of adversity, was able to make such important contributions. I think what's quite nice is that with this collection is that it opens up sort of facets of my dad's life that that were unknown to me, you know, seeing the, seeing the photographs of him as a young man, as a, as a student, you know, realising that he was, he was young once, you know, and, and uh, could, could uh, sort of lark around in a photo, photo um, was really nice. And also sort of obviously seeing him as an able-bodied person as well, because, um, you know, by the time I came along, um, sadly, he was confined to a wheelchair. The wonderful thing about archives and why they matter so much for the historical record is that they take you behind the scenes. So you see the ink splots, the smudges, the corrections, the intimate moments in letters and photographs, the drafts and conversations, all of the pieces that you don't see in the polished, published work and the public life. And there's one letter which really stands out for me. It's from 1964 and it is Stephen Hawking's PhD supervisor, Dennis C. Armour, writing to his father, Frank Hawking. Stephen is just 22, and it's the end of his second year of his PhD thesis. And this glowing testimonial, handwritten, uh, which just, you know, talks about the progress that Stephen's made as a scientist. Uh, and it concludes by saying what a pleasure it is to supervise him, and that really uh, it's at the stage when Stephen Hawking is teaching his supervisor, teaching his teacher, because his research has taken him so far. One of the reasons why we collect archives at the University Library of Cambridge is because we are a place of research and we're a place of study and learning. And we're also a place where people come to creatively engage with the archives we hold. And so we are absolutely committed to making this archive available to the widest possible audience. We will need to fundraise to do some of that work to make sure that we can make it as widely available now, but also for all time. You know, Stephen Hawking thought in millennia, and that's our job too, as a forever institution, to be able to preserve and safeguard these materials for all time. As a family, we are absolutely delighted that the, the archive is going to be looked after so well by Cambridge University Library and the Science Museum. To, um, important and venerable institutions um, that you know had close connections with with our father um, during his lifetime um, so you know it really is the, the the right place for these materials to be made accessible to you know to the public and hopefully inspire um, you know generations to come to continue his work 
Well, one of the reasons I'm so pleased that the archive is here is because it's what Professor Hawking wanted to happen. And part of that, I think, was joining the pantheon of scientists and their great discoveries, which are represented in the archives of Cambridge University Library. Cambridge is a place where great discoveries that have changed the world happen. And so it is wonderful to complete the trinity of Newton, Darwin and Hawking here at Cambridge University Library and to make these collections open and available for research and study for students of all ages across the world. <laughs>